chapter 11 from verse 1 to 4. I'm going to read those four verses. Then I'm going to take a minute to pray and I'll share my thoughts with you. The word of the Lord from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 down to 4 says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Father, we thank you for life, we thank you for your blessings, we thank you for your mercies. Father, even now as I stand before this sacred text, as we stand in your presence, for five, ten minutes, we have the opportunity, God, for you to speak a word in our hearts and our spirit that will have eternal significance. I pray, God, that you would hide me behind the curtain and that you would take control of my voice, my intellect, my being, that every word that I speak today, I will speak as an oracle of God. And I pray that through your words, your words which is life, mighty God, that someone will come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray, God, that today someone who has wandered away from the faith like that prodigal boy will say, I'll arise and go home. Father, I pray today that the believers will be strengthened and edified. I commit all things in your hand now for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to speak to you in brief and uh, reflect upon Oral's life as I share that word with you. On the last four words, or the last three words, of verse number four. He being dead, yet speaketh. The thought in these words is what in English terms we will call an oxymoron. What does that mean? It means that if you were to look at the word dead, it would not suggest that a person or a thing that is dead is still yet able to speak. And yet the Bible said that Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. God testifying of his gift. He being dead, yet speak. I remember one of the first conversations, and might be the only one I remember when Oral came to the States and came back to Jamaica. He said, we Jamaicans say cash is king, but in the U.S. it is credit that is king. And as his niece may mention, there's something about him that he would begin to speak and he would be drawn to take a seat and to listen. And you would realize that he's not just speaking from a place of wanting to speak, but he speaks from a place of knowledge. And so I want us to understand that while the sound you hear coming from my mouth and the sound that comes from us while we're yet alive comes from our lungs pushing that ear through the vocal cords and uh, the, 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 the verb vibration throughout the atmosphere. That as it relates to him sliding in front of us today, that has ceased. But I want you to understand that as human beings, and I speak in general terms because I am not so much speaking to him, but I'm speaking to all of us, myself included as well, is that there is a time that we're alive and we speak as it relates to the vocal you hear. But beyond the vocal you hear, as we walk and as we journey along life, we are yet speaking. And therefore, we have to be conscious how we speak and what we speak. And I'm not talking now again, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the voice you're hearing. When I told you earlier, and I like to just preach out of my spirit, though I have a prepared text in front of me, I told you that I, I met his brother Delroy outside and I said to him, 
Do you remember me? And he said, yes, I do. And I said to him, I wouldn't feel any way if you did not remember me because the truth is there are times that I meet younger men and women from my community who I don't remember because they've grown out of my sight. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I cannot say that you would have done anything that would have hurt me because the truth is if you did, I would have as a child remember. What well, are you saying, Pastor? Sometimes we carry out an act of kindness and we don't understand for how long that act of kindness continues to speak. And the same thing is true that we might carry out an act that is not justified and that mischief will outlive us. And therefore we have to live our life with a consciousness that while we are yet alive, we are speaking. As I speak to you, if I'm a good friend, uh, how you put a good preacher, there are times I am going to raise my voice, and there are going to times I'm going to lower, lower my voice. You see, there are some times we talk, and again, I want you to, to, to see the paradox, I want you to see the parallel that I'm drawing, that sometimes we speak, and that which we speak might just be in a soft tone. But the softness of the tone does not always indicate the impact of what we say. And so sometimes, if I was to talk about people who are dead, but yet speak, might be some as we just celebrate the great, and he is Dr. Martin Luther King, for the impact that he has on all African American and beyond African American, the, 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 the voice with which he speaks is very loud. And sometimes we're drawn to the loudness of the voice. There are yet some, how you put it, unsung heroes like all that is lying before us that by virtue of the softness of his voice, the softness of his action, we might have a tendency to forget. There's a phrase I came across and I want to just drop it with you and when we, in this, how you put it, modern age, want to get excited as a preacher, we say, you can tweet this. It says, a man is never dead while his name is still calling. We were driving down and my cousin was with me and we called Uncle Sam's name. And those who come from the community that I know would know who I am referring to. It's an uncle that I had that might be dying while I was a child. But it is that if I go out on the street and come back home, he would have some cornmeal and porridge ready for me. What are you saying, Pastor? Oral is not speaking from his vocal cord, but the meal he prepared for us, the cabinet he fixed, the switch that he turns on, those things are yet speaking. So how does he speak to us, Pastor? He speaks to us through the words that he has spoken, words of admonition, words of encouragement. He speaks to us through the works that he has done, the things that he has performed, that even when we walk into a house today and we look at the paint on the wall, we're going to be reminded that that's a hand job of the man that I love, the man that I've come to call uncle, that I've come to call husband, that I've come to call brother. He is, and it's a strong word, but I'm going to stick with it. He is dead. And you know, sometimes I say, Pastor, what a callous pastor. Can he not just say he has passed? Sometimes it's good to deal with the finality of the body but to understand that as much as the Bible said that death is the final enemy, that death cannot steal from us the utterance of his voice and the utterance of his love and the utterance of his compassion and the utterance of his commitment. And so let me just go through my list here. So he yet speak by virtue of his words. He yet speak by virtue of his works. He yet speak by his wisdom. He yet speak by his fate. His fate is something and someone greater than himself. He yet speak by his commitment. The fact that he says, I'm going to do it. You can put it with any island. Your pot on the fire. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. I remember for many of us, and maybe all of us sitting in here as young men from Colgate, uh, Oral preceded us uh, to come to the United States. But he never that he would 
would sit on our veranda and he would sit on the stone wall over the Thompson's shop and he would share a word of wisdom. Man, if you want to come to anything, uh, you can't just see Colgate as your sphere, but you have to understand that there's something beyond Colgate. He motivated us, he challenged us, and he made it uh, that we could achieve what he thought God had placed in him to achieve. His sacrifice. Our sister talked about the fact that he was upset with Eileen, a cousin of mine that I know or knew as well. And so it is that if he said, I'm going to come over and do it, he might not do it today. But he is a sacrifice honoring young man. And we're going to remember him for that. His sacrifice is going to be still speaking after we walk out of this sanctuary today. Somebody mentioned that his passion. He did not do anything half-heartedly. If you ever get in a conversation and our sister says, it's not that he's trying to lord it over you, but if you ever get in a conversation with Oral, he's going to make sure that before you walk away from that conversation, you get the point. And, and if he has to pull an extra source, he's going to pull an extra source because he speaks with conviction. He has a certain passion with everything that he does. His sense of duty, his sense of purpose. One of the challenge that we have, many of us, or Islanders, or wherever you come from, is that sometimes people grow up in the community that we're in, and they hang their head, and they allow themselves to be molded in the community, and molded in the negative scene. The Bible said that they'd ask the question of Jesus, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? If you were to have asked that question, what Question, can any good come out of Colgate? Can any good come out of my land? But Oral did not allow that to limit his fear. He says, there is yet borders beyond where I am. And so he had uh, that sense of duty, a sense of purpose to be all that God had called him to be. And I have here in my notes that he had an excellence of character. What do you mean by passion or excellent character? You could not get him to do anything that he felt was not right or was not productive. You can say what you want to say, you can carry what you want to carry, but he had a sense of right and wrong, and that was one of the things that propelled him and motivated him. I am sure for his niece and his cousin and those of us who saw him as role model, that every time we are faced with a circumstance like we would have asked of Jesus, we're going to ask what would Oral do in this situation. I had an experience this week, or, or when, when the program came to mind, it was last week into, weekend into this week, and I saw that he was born in 1960. And I was tempted to call Sister Joan and to call Monique and say, no man, you guys get that date wrong. Because there's no way if you know him when I knew him, the way he behaved like he was this big grown man, that I would have thought he was only seven years older than me. Because when you sat with him, he commanded the atmosphere, and he had something to offer. And it's almost like he became daddy in that atmosphere. And I'm like, you know, and I, I, I can just joke about it. I wish I could have a conversation with him now. And I said, I always thought you were such a big man, but now I found out you're not as old as you let us believe. But I say that to say he had something about him that you could not sway him and he would not be taken with the crowd. Uh, I saw somebody write that this week. Can I say it as a preacher and I'm putting it together? The crowd is not always right. And Oral taught us that and today he's still teaching us that. That the fact uh, that everybody is doing it doesn't necessarily mean it is right. The last thing I had here is in his admonition. I tell you, many of us, Mr. Curtis Church, spoke about it. We are here in the state. My cousin Eugene is here and his wife, Michelle. Many of us are who we are today because Oral took us under his wings. Admonish us. Tell us, go get a college degree. If you come to the state, this is how you're going to do. Uh, my cousin Nixon, they, 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 they could talk uh, for themselves. I am sure that they will tell you that uh, Oral created the roadmap that they followed because he had a way of advising and admonishing us. So what are you saying, Pastor Brown? Today we're going to walk out and we're going to place uh, uh, this corpse inside the earth. But I guarantee you that tomorrow his life and 
and the deeds and the passion and the things he shared is going to continue to speak even while his vocal cords are no longer in existence. May I bring that home to the scripture which is really my duty. The Bible said that there's come a time when every one of us is going to stand before God and our works, our life, our deeds will have to speak for us. The Bible said when we stand before him, he's going to say to some, you have done well. I was hunger and you fed me. I was naked and you closed me. I was in prison and you visited me. And he said, then they're going to ask the question, when did I see you hungry and fed you? When did I see you naked and close you? When did I see you thirsty and give you to drink? And Jesus is going to say, as much as you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. I challenge each and every one of us that when we leave here, let us go out and let us allow the life that God has given us uh, speak for us. Once somebody said, if I can help somebody as I travel along, then my living is not in vain. Can I tell you, and I don't believe you had any doubt, but just in case you had any doubt, as much as we would all want to say that he is gone too soon, but as much as we might have had that thought in our mind, may we be reminded uh, that his life has touched us, and if he had helped you, and he had helped me, or you and I, the reality is, as long as we live, that which he has deposited us continue to live, and we pass it on to our children, and our children, children. Many are dead, but yet speak, and I close. Our parents, we curry the chicken the way mama used to curry it. We cross our T's and dot our I's the way the elementary school teacher taught us. We speak as it relates to spiritual matter the way the preacher preached it. We drive on roads that many unsung heroes have paved. And sometimes very unaware, but the unawareness of the speech does not change the fact that it was uttered. An oral life is not for us to judge, but truly it has been an instrumentation to all who are here. Even as you sit in this congregation today, the fact that you're hearing this preacher is because oral would have touched you or touched somebody that touched you. And you're going to leave this room today, and there's going to be something about his life, something about the preacher that you're going to carry on to eternity. And that's going to be he being dead, but yet speak. The final thing, when we stand before God, may he say to us, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you Lord over much. May we never hear, depart from me. I know you not. But may we have that assurance that our life is hidden in Christ. Would you step up with me? Would you step up with me? Would you step up with me? Hallelujah, somebody.